Hey everyone, I'm photographer and filmmaker TK North. In this video, we'll be covering perhaps one of the least understood pillars of photography, but also a really essential setting to both understand and master. That of course is ISO. Let's jump straight in. So what is ISO? So ISO is one of our three pillars of photography that make up our exposure triangle, along with shutter speed and also aperture. These three settings together control the overall exposure when capturing absolutely any photo. To better understand the term ISO, first of all, we need to go back to film cameras. Originally, ISO numbers were set by the International Organization for Standardization to refer to the sensitivity of the film in a camera to light. Now with digital photography, ISO still represents these same standards with the same numbering system, but instead of representing the sensitivity of the film to light, it represents the sensitivity of a digital camera's sensor to light. So when adjusting ISO, we are essentially changing the sensitivity of the sensor to light or how the darkness or lightness appears in your photos. By choosing the right ISO number for different situations, this will allow us to capture the best quality image and make sure the right amount of light is hitting the sensor. To understand this better, we should always remember that the lower the ISO number, this is better for brighter or more well-lit conditions, like bright sunlight during daytime. On the other hand, when less light is available and it's darker, we need a higher ISO number to help compensate. So a higher ISO increases your camera's light sensitivity, which is ideal for low light situations like shooting at nighttime. Selecting the right ISO. With practice, you will learn which ISO numbers and settings are best for different situations, but here are a few general guidelines to help get you started. ISO 100. This is the best choice for shooting outdoors on sunny days, the brightest situation you'll likely be shooting in. Remember, the brighter the conditions, the lower the ISO you'll need. Coming up to ISO 400, which is somewhere in the middle, this is best when the lighting is still decent, but far less intense, like indoors by a window or perhaps outdoors on more of a cloudy day. Here, a slightly higher ISO is going to be ideal. Coming up to ISO 800, this might be more ideal, say shooting indoors without an additional light source like a flash, you'll often be working somewhere around this range. Lastly, higher ISOs, so anything from 1600 or higher. This will be basically when it's pretty dark or shooting indoors with dim lighting. You'll need a much higher ISO, especially if movement is involved because you'll need a high ISO to maintain a faster shutter speed. So again, this is why mastering your complete understanding of the exposure triangle is so important. As an example, if you're completing an entire photo shoot outdoors in bright sunlight, chances are you probably won't even need to adjust your ISO, potentially shooting at ISO 100 for the entire photo shoot. Compare this to a photo shoot during sunset where the light is gradually changing. Here, you may need to start with a lower ISO and gradually increase it as it gets darker to make sure your photos are properly exposed, but to also keep your other settings consistent. Another thing to consider here, as we increase our ISO, this can also start to introduce a little bit of noise or grain, which we'll touch on in a sec. Photography tips for ISO. To get you started, your camera can actually be a really great tool to help you master and understand different ISO settings. Set your camera to auto ISO in slightly different conditions. You can then go back and look at what ISO the camera selected. This will help give you a better understanding of how ISO changes with different conditions, here you will also begin to understand perhaps at what ISO on your particular camera starts to introduce a little bit of noise into your photos. So as mentioned, the higher the ISO, 
sometimes this can start to introduce a little bit of noise or what we call grain into your photos. Graininess, although sometimes used as an artistic effect in photography, often we want as little grain as possible for a clean, sharp image. So a lower ISO value typically gives you less noise or grain on your final image, which is usually preferred. So although most of the time we do want to keep our ISO as low as possible, just because your camera goes to say ISO 50, we don't always want to use that lowest possible ISO setting. Most cameras will have a more ideal ISO setting starting around 100 or 200. The best thing to do here is to experiment. Experiment with different ISO numbers in different conditions so you can work out the perfect level of clarity and grain for each of those different situations depending on your ISO number. Next up, remember that your tripod can help you capture low noise images in dark settings. This is because it will allow you to shoot with a slower or longer shutter speed. In comparison, if you're shooting handheld in low light conditions, this is where you often need to really bump up your ISO ISO and potentially it will start to introduce a little bit of grain or noise in your photos. Again, the importance of fully grasping the exposure triangle and also understanding for your particular camera when noise or grain is likely to be introduced depending on your ISO number. All right, to finish off, remember that practice and experience is going to be the best way to really master a setting like ISO. So regardless of what your goals are for photography, mastering ISO and fully understanding it is going to be a step in the right direction. Don't forget to continue your photography journey by checking out some of the other photography topics covered here with Adobe. I'm TK North, thanks so much for watching.